Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about immune thrombocytopenic purpura, or ITP, so let's get started. The old name was immune thrombocytopenic purpura, or ITP. There was another name, it was called idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, but now we call it immune thrombocytopenia, same acronym. Why do we call it immune thrombocytopenia instead of immune thrombocytopenic purpura? Because many patients do not have the actual purpura. Let me answer the question of the previous video. What are the diseases that are characterized by the presence of large or giant platelets? Here are the diseases that have large or giant platelets, also known as macrothrombocytes. You have Bernard Soulier syndrome or BSS. They are not found in Glanzman, so this is a very common mistake. Gray platelet syndrome. Why do you put the A capital like this? Because this is a problem in the alpha granules in the platelets. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura, which is today's topic, Mayhiglin anomaly, and Mediterranean macrothrombocytopenia. Can you give me another two diseases common in the Mediterranean area? Yes, Mediterranean sea fever, G6PD deficiency, and beta thalassemia. This video is part of a series on bleeding and coagulation. Check this playlist, please. The steps of vasoconstriction are numerous. Today's topic is a problem in the temporary platelet plug because ITP is a problem in primary hemostasis, specifically platelet aggregation. Bleeding and coagulation has many steps. Today's problem is here, primary hemostasis. What's going to happen to the platelet count? Look at the name. It's called immune thrombocytopenic purpura, so platelet count is low. If platelet count is low, of course, the bleeding time will be prolonged. If the patients have problems with their platelets, please do not give them antiplatelet drugs. Don't add insult to injury. What are the steps of primary hemostasis? First platelet adhesion, then activation, then aggregation. In immune thrombocytopenic purpura, we have O2 antibodies against the GP2B3A. When you inhibit this receptor, platelets will not be able to aggregate with each other. What kind of antibody is it? Is it IgG or IgM? It's IgG, and therefore it can cross the placenta. Let's go through the phases of platelet plug very quickly. Normally, here's your intact endothelium. The platelet is just cruising through the bloodstream. But then they noticed an injury, so they will swell and they will form pseudopods. And then the platelets will adhere to the subendothelial collagen thanks to GP1B of the platelet and the von Willebrand factor of the subendothelium. After adhesion, they will activate and secrete ADP and thromboxane E2 to try to whistle to other platelets to come and play. ADP is really nice because it expresses the GP2B3A receptor. After activation, there is another secretion, thromboxane E2. After this, we have platelet aggregation, and then we have platelet procoagulant activity thanks to platelet factor 3. Not to be confused with platelet factor 4, which is involved in HIT, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Let me tell you about this GP2B3A because it's very important. Normal function, platelet aggregation. It's influenced by ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Pathology that involves this receptor. We have four different types of pathology. This receptor could be deficient in Glenzman thrombosthenia. It could be attacked by O2 antibodies in immune thrombocytopenic purpura or immune thrombocytopenia, which is today's topic. It could be tackled or inhibited by paraproteins in cases of paraproteinemia, such as multiple myeloma. It is impaired by uremia in cases of renal failure, whether the renal failure is acute or chronic. But of course, it's going to be more common with chronic. Hemostasis disorders are either problems with primary hemostasis or secondary hemostasis. Problems with primary hemostasis involve platelets. Secondary hemostasis problems involve coagulation factors. What's the end result in normal primary hemostasis? Platelet plug. How about secondary hemostasis? Fibrin thrombus. What tests do we use to test for primary hemostasis? Platelet count and bleeding time. As well as platelet agrogometry, which we have talked about before. Secondary hemostasis, you need PT and PTT. Clinical symptoms of primary hemostasis defect, mucocutaneous bleeding, this is superficial. However, secondary hemostasis problems, we have anatomical or deep tissue bleeding. Primary hemostasis disorders, the problem could be in the platelet or in the vessel. If it's in the platelet, it could be platelet number or platelet function. We call this thrombocytopenia, we call this thrombasthenia. What's the problem in ITP? Actually, both. But more importantly, it's a problem with platelet number. Platelet function could be okay, it could be hyperfunctioning, by the way. However, they are low in number. So, 
since they are low in number, pleated count will be low and bleeding time will be prolonged even though the platelets may be hyperfunctioning. So why is the bleeding time prolonged? Because the platelets are low in number. Even though they are hyperfunctioning, they are very few to cause a significant good function. Platelets could have problem with their number or with their function. We test for this by platelet count. We test for this bleeding time. How about the condition? It's called thrombocytopenia, thrombosthenia. Give me an example, aplastic anemia, and you can add immune thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP. Here we have Bernard Soulier and Glensman thrombosthenia. Don't forget that Bernard Soulier had a problem with thrombocytopenia and thrombosthenia. Platelet count could be normal. Here's the normal level. It could be low. It could be high. Low, theoretically, less than 150,000, but clinically less than 50,000. Thrombocytopenia could be pseudo if you put it in a purple top tube sometimes due to EDTA, causing clumping of the platelets, also known as microsatellites. Or it could be true thrombocytopenia, which is evil sometimes. Underproduction, overdestruction, and splenic sequestration. These are the causes of true thrombocytopenia. Here is ITP, baby. It's an immune over destruction, which will lead to true thrombocytopenia. Can you please help me reach 250,000 subscribers? I will give you something cool. Here are the causes of hemostasis disorders, primary or secondary. Primary, the problem is in the plate or in the vessel wall, thrombocytopenia or thrombosthenia. Cause of thrombosthenia, you have GP1B defect, GP2B3A defect, such as Glenzman thrombosthenia and ITP, platelet toxin or drugs. In Bernard Soulier, the problem was here, GP1B. In Glanzman thrombosthenia, the problem was here, GP2B3A. In ITP, the problem is also here. Remember that GP1B was responsible for platelet adhesion, but GP2B3A for aggregation. Problems with GP2B3A include Glanzman thrombosthenia, O2 antibodies such as ITP, these are IgG O2 antibodies, could be paraproteins in multiple myeloma or uremia in renal failure or drugs and the hemostasis disorders again. Please remember that ITP is a problem with over-destruction, which will lead to thrombocytopenia, as well as problem with platelet aggregation. But please don't forget that the platelets could be hyperfunctioning. They are trying their best, but they suck. ITP is a true thrombocytopenia, and it's a disorder of platelet aggregation. Primary hemostasis disorders clinically could be asymptomatic. No symptoms, no problem. Mucocutaneous bleeding or superficial bleeding. Mucocutaneous, mucocutaneous, cutaneous, petechia purpura and ecchymosis. Muco, epistaxis, bleeding from scratches, easy bruising, gingival bleeding, menorrhagia, etc. There is no deep bleeding, there is no late bleeding, there is no hemarthrosis, there is no deep muscle bleeding or cranial bleed, except if the patient is very old and the platelets are very low. ITP, etiology, could be unknown, we call this primary, could be known, we call it secondary. Either way, we have O2 antibodies. Tell me more about primary. It has an unknown cause, and we call it idiopathic, which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. But doctors are super sophisticated to the point of being stupid. They will never say, oh, I don't know. They will say idiopathic, oh. Intellectuals and their verbal virtuosity not to be confused with your written arty tertiosity. I think I should stop talking. Secondary, we have a known cause. It's secondary to something else, such as what? Such as lupus, CLL, APS. This is not the brake system in your Honda Civic. This is anti-phospholipid syndrome. Viruses such as HIV and hepatitis C. Remember, it's either S or C. Pathophysiology, IgG, O2 antibodies against GP2B3A, which will lead to decreased platelet aggregation. Clinically, mucocutaneous bleeding, skin, and mucous membrane, as you know. The purpura is non-palpable. Please remember this. Diagnosis, platelet count, low, which will elevate or prolong the bleeding time. Peripheral smear, macrothrombocytopenia, giant in size and few in number. Please remember the question of the previous video was what are the causes of giant platelets? ITP was one of them. Since the secondary hemostasis is fine, PT is normal as well as PTT. Treatment. No symptoms, no treatment. It's like a used car salesman. No cash, no problem. But if you tell the patient we will not treat you, the patient will respond, Oh, doctor, I did not waste time and money to come to see you, and then you tell me that we'll do nothing. Instead, you should say, Sir, we will practice watchful waiting. If it's getting worse, steroids or IVIG. 
platelet transfusion, if it's really severe and the platelet count is really low, you can add steroids to the platelet transfusion. Sometimes you add even IVIG to them. Rituximab. Rituximab is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody. The mnemonic is Rituximab. It has to, X, and Mab. Y2, because it's 2, and X is 10, Roman numeral, 2 times 10 equals 20. It's anti-CD20. YI, because it's chimeric, it's not humanized. And MAB is monoclonal antibody. Why would you like to be anti-CD20? Because CD20 is actually found on the B lymphocytes. And the B lymphocytes are the ones that will become plasma cells. And plasma cells are the ones that will secrete O2 antibodies. We have other drugs such as el thrombopag and romiplostim. El thrombopag, it will boost the thrombocytes, which are the platelets. Romiplostim, plo, for platelets. These two are called TPO receptor agonist. What is TPO? Thrombopoietin, which we have talked about it before. Last resort is to remove the spleen. We have talked before about the platelet count and the expected clinical findings. Severe bleeding usually does not happen until the platelet count drop below 20,000. Let's compare between acute ITP and chronic ITP. Acute ITP usually happens in children. Chronic ITP usually happens in adult. Please remember leukemia. ALL, which is acute, happened in children, but CLL took place in adults. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Acute usually happens after a viral illness. Chronic, no, 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 it's not after a viral illness. It's usually a young woman, probably during pregnancy. Why during pregnancy? It's just that we diagnose it during pregnancy because we do lots of blood tests during pregnancy and we may discover, oh, the platelet count is actually low. And ITP is a very common cause, if not the most common cause of thrombocytopenia. Acute ITP that happens in children is usually self-limited and has good prognosis. Chronic ITP is relapsing. It comes and goes, comes and goes. Sometimes it's mild, sometimes severe, sometimes it's asymptomatic. Both of them have IgG O2 antibodies against GP2B3A interfering with plate aggregation treatment. No symptoms, no treatment. Steroids, IVIG, or anti-D immune globulins if the kid is RH positive and DAT positive. This is the positive Coombs test. Platelet transfusion plus IV methylprednisone plus IVIG plus anti-D if we have life-threatening bleeding. Other options include rituximab, il thrombopag, and romiplostim. Chronic ITP in adults, same management, splenectomy should be an option. We tried to preserve the spleen for kids because they need it because it's a major immune organ, but if the ITP is really bad, a splenectomy could be an option, but please remember, it's usually self-limited. Let me tell you about splenectomy for your ITP. It should be last resort. Indications, frequent ITP relapses, it's not going away, and there is no response to steroids. If you decide to perform splenectomy, do not forget to vaccinate before the surgery and antibiotics during or after the surgery. Vaccinate against what? Against the encapsulated organisms because this was the function of the spleen. What are these encapsulated organisms? Shin, strept pneumo, haemophilus, influenza, and Neisseria meningitidis. When you perform splenectomy, you hit three birds with one stone. Let me explain. Normally, platelets hide inside the spleen. When you remove the spleen, the platelets don't have a place to hide. They are forced to stay in the peripheral circulation. This will raise your platelet count. Awesome! Second bird, IgG O2 antibodies against GP2B3A are produced by plasma cells in the freaking spleen. When you remove the spleen, you eliminate that. Great! Platelets get destroyed by splenic macrophages in ITP. When you remove the spleen, you get rid of that. Wonderful! Use the promo code 35 of cancer to get a 35% discount towards any product on my website. I recommend the anti-cancer pharmacology course. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you in advance. Some tips. Glanzman thrombasthenia, inherited or acquired. Inherited is autosomal recessive. Acquired is associated with other autoimmune diseases such as lupus and ITP. Remember that lupus, antiphospholipid syndrome, CLL, and viruses were responsible for secondary autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and secondary immune thrombocytopenia.
Try to connect the dots, folks. Risk to seat and Kovac Rese can help distinguish between BSS, which is Bernard Soli, and Glensman. We have talked about this before. Remember that Purpura in ITP is non palpable, but in Hinox, Shanley, and Purpura, it is palpable. Why was the purpura palpable in Hinox, Shanley, and Purpura? Because it's a freaking vasculitis. Vasculitis, as well as emboli, is a cause of palpable purpura. However, non palpable purpura is seen in localized cutaneous disorders, generalized due to problems in the clotting or coagulation. So, thrombocytopenia, hello, ITP is here. Do not confuse palpable with blanchable. Palpable means it's elevated. When you feel it, it's elevated. Of the surface of the skin. Blanchable means it disappears with pressure. All purpura are non-blanchable, which means they do not disappear with pressure. What if it disappeared with pressure? It could be like a bee sting or something. This is not a freaking purpura. So all purpura are non-blanchable. However, some purpura are palpable, others are non-palpable. Confusing palpable with blanchable is like confusing palpation with percussion. One has nothing to do with the other. But I use my fingers to palpate and percuss. Yes, and you also use your finger to curse other people. How is this an argument? Please be a nice person, don't curse, and don't confuse palpation with percussion, and don't confuse palpable with blanchable. Primary ITP is a diagnosis of exclusion. If platelets came back normal, you should repeat it as usual. Please go back to video number 6 in this playlist. If peripheral smear shows microsatellites or platelet clumping, it means you added EDTA, which is the purple top tube. This is pseudothrombocytopenia. What should I do? Use a different tube. Use the blue top tube which has sodium citrate and repeat the test. ITP should have no cystocytes. If you see those cystocytes, it means it's TTP, not ITP. Huge point. ITP should have normal red blood cells and white blood cells. Only the platelets should be abnormal. We call this an isolated thrombocytopenia. Please do not be a fool and order the lab test for the IgG02 antibodies against GP2B3A. It's very non-specific. What's the goal of the treatment? Is it to manage the low platelet count? Who cares about a stupid number on a stupid Excel spreadsheet? We care about flesh and blood human beings. Here are the tube colors and what's in them. If the patient is an elderly with ITP, you have two problems. GI bleed and CNS bleed may take place. Also, you need to rule out MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, which we have talked about it before in my hematology oncology place. How do I tell the difference? Bone marrow biopsy, baby. What's the difference between ITP and MDS? ITP has isolated thrombocytopenia. MDS has pancytopenia. ITP have normal marrow cellularity, but in MDS you have hypercellular marrow. In ITP there is no specific genetic anomaly, but in MDS there are many. Also, what was the difference between MDS and aplastic anemia? First, both of them had pancytopenia. However, MDS had hypercellular marrow, but aplastic anemia had hypocellular marrow. Let's use the Socratic dialogue for ITP. Why give steroids? They are immunosuppressants, and ITP is an autoimmune disease. Why give IVIG? Because they inhibit or satiate the hungry macrophages. Look at these. These are the splenic macrophages. They are hungry and eager to eat your platelets. Let's shove some IVIG into their mouth so that they stop engulfing platelets because they are busy eating this IVIG. When they stop engulfing platelets, platelet count will increase within 24 to 48 hours, which makes it ideal before surgery. Why does this macrophage seem to have a cleft lip here? Haha. <laughs> Why anti D immune globulins? Because they induce a mild hemolysis. Mild hemolysis? Why would you like to cause mild hemolysis? Because when you destroy your red blood cells, the splenic macrophages will get busy trying to remove the RBC debris. So they start to engulf the RBCs and leave the platelets alone. This will raise the platelet count. Who else is gonna explain to you like this? Your professor? Oh, give me a break. This was the best ITP explanation on the face of the earth. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Get my anti-cancer pharmacology course, my antibiotics course and my cardiac pharmacology course here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.